Hi, my name is Mary Vukusevich and the purpose of this video is uh, in response to Paul Ross's comment uh, on Google Plus about how to use Hangouts to um, record lectures or anything else really. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to show you step by step how to do this. Um, and what I need to do is, I actually tried to do it live, but I was having problems with having two um, Google Hangouts uh, working at the same time. So I've done some uh, screenshots to show you how uh, this works. Now I'm just going to go to it here and hopefully this will work okay. All right, sorry, I have to make it a little bit bigger so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, here we go. Hopefully you'll be able to see that fairly well. Alright, the first thing that you need, <clears throat> you need two things actually to start with. You need a Google Plus account and you also need a YouTube account. Now, I'm presuming you already have a Google Plus account and if you do, then um, it will automatically generate a YouTube account for you. If you don't have a YouTube account linked to your Google Plus account, don't worry, the Hangout will tell you straight away that that's what you need to do and it will give you instructions on how to do that. So, um, Paul, hopefully this is the information that you need. Um, it wasn't clear from your question whether you'd gotten past this point or whether um, and, and you had some more complex questions. So please, um, after you've watched this, do respond if, if I'm not addressing what you've asked correctly. Okay, so you've got your Google Plus page open and you need to go here and click on um, this section here. That'll bring, you, bring down a drop-down box for you. I'm just going to go to the next slide so you can see that. It brings down this drop-down box here. And you need to click down onto this section, Hangouts, and it will open this page. And once you see that, it will you have to click on this Start a Hangout on Air. So it's the Hangout on Air that enables you to do the recording. So just go down again to the next screen. And once you've done that, it will give you this page and ask you to give your Hangout on Air a name, which I've done here, Test Hangout, and then a little blurb of what the project is about, so just sharing how to hang out. And you want to make sure that it's starting now, and actually the broadcast and what you're recording will be um, available in real time um, on Google Plus and also on YouTube. So if anybody's following you, or if you've invited anybody to um, watch this with you in real time, you can add the names of the people in there. I've chosen not to do that, just to leave it um, public for the moment. Then you have to click on share and the screen will now look like this. Oops, gone too far. So then you have to click on the start button here, the little camera, and that will start the whole hangout rolling. And then this is the screen that you'll see. So your webcam will be on and <clears throat> you'll be able to then see yourself and make adjustments and so on. So the webcam is actually capturing the image of you, but if you want it to capture the image of your computer, uh, desktop or the PowerPoint or whatever it is that you're wanting to have a look at, you have to go over here to this green icon with the arrow on it and that's the screen share button. And if you click on that button, you then it opens this screen for you and you're able to go through and find any kind of screen that it is that you're wanting to share with your audience during the Hangout. So um, click on there, it opens this box and then you click on the, on the one that, on the particular screen that you're interested in and just press Start Screen Share and it will open it up for you. I'm just going to go back now to the Hangout and show myself again. Okay, here I am. So hopefully um, that is the kind of information that you are after. Now I must make mention that I actually don't record everything on um, Google Hangouts and I'm using different modalities to capture what it is that I need for my online subject. So really, where's my phone? Here we go. I'm just using my very simple Samsung smartphone um, to take some recordings in, say, the clinical setting or for any other purposes 
that I want um, because I'm not actually sure of your question about how to enable Google Hangouts on your um, iPad so you can take it out into the clinic. I've just been recording little videos using my smartphone and then uploading those to YouTube and creating a playlist. Now the key to that is that you have to keep them short. Um, Lee Blackall tells me, <coughs> excuse me, that the average YouTube clip is about just over four minutes long. So uh, as we're evolving technologically, our attention span is dramatically decreasing, apparently. Anyway, so um, I'm applying what I call the Sesame Street approach. So whenever I'm developing online content, what I'm doing is I'm um, giving them uh, a little bit of reading, then a little bit of watching YouTube, then a little bit of an activity, and then a little bit of reading again. So it's kind of like Sesame Street, a little bit of counting, then we have a little bit of Big Bird, then we have the ABCs, and then we have another activity. So short and sharp to keep the, the students engaged because they're just not going to sit there and watch a one-hour lecture. Forget about it if it's, if, it's, um, if it's online. It needs to be short things that will capture um, their attention for a short period of time and they can move on to the next activity. I'm just going to go onto my screen share again and I'll just show you how I've dealt with a little um, conundrum that I had. Here it is. So what this is, is this is actually a video that I made just using my mobile phone and what I needed was, I needed to show the students, it was actually an activity where um, they needed to have a lens box in front of them and they need to, needed to pull out lenses out of that lens box and see what the different effect on print was with a plus lens or a minus lens. and. Um, this subject used to be a face-to-face -face subject, so the students actually got to do this uh, in a prac room. But I needed to be able to replicate this, but in an online uh, way. And so what I chose to do was do it, do sort of a virtual lens box activity. So um, as you can see, that all I've done is I've recorded um, what happens when I put a plus lens on top of print, and then we've moved down further. I think I've got the plus and the minus lens together so you can see the students will be able to then see what the effect size is on um, the, the effect of the, lens, the different lenses on the print size and that was a little activity that I needed them to do and then have a discussion about. So yeah again just with just with um, simply using that with the, the mobile phone. Okay so hopefully that's answered your question. Um, Anyway, if there's anything else, just post it on the on the Google Plus page and I'll try and answer it to the best of my ability. I have to give a disclaimer here. I am no expert. I'm totally winging my way through this and I am doing a lot of experimentation uh, to find out what works best for me. So I think that the time invested in experimenting is actually worthwhile because, um, you know, you do, you do learn different skills just by trial and error. Okay, bye for now.